In the last couple of videos, you have learned how to use text using text blocks as well as labels. But now it's time to actually enter some text because that's going to be a very important aspect of any application where you want to have the option for the user to enter text into your application to then work with that text. Okay, so we're going to look at text box, which is another control that will help us out with exactly that. My name is Dennis Panuta, and if you like the video, then please hit that like button. It really helps us out. And if you haven't watched the other videos of the series, check out the playlist first before watching this one. And then I'd say let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at text boxes. Let's create a new project for that. And text boxes will allow us to go ahead and enter text, which is quite important in any application actually. So let's call this one text box demo. And I'm going to change this up a little bit. So I think a height of 400 is too much. 200 times 300 or so should be enough. We now will have a small window here, which will do the trick for us. Okay, so inside of the grid, I could now add elements, I'm going to use a stack panel instead, which will allow me to stack elements on top of each other and will also allow my text box to take as much space as it will require in terms of its height. Okay, so here you can just go ahead and use a text box just like that. And it will already create this text box directly for you. Let's run this real quick to see what's actually happening here. So there we have our application. We can click in here and write something like hello world. Okay. But you cannot have multiple lines or anything like that. That's really just it. Now let's adjust this text box a little bit. So if you want to change the height of it, you can, for example, just change the font size. So the text will be bigger. So let's say we're going to use something like 30. You see that now this element has become taller or higher. If you run it again, then you will see that suddenly the text will be significantly larger. If you want to have a little bit of distance towards all the directions, you can add something called margin. Okay, so let's say we want to have a margin of 15 pixels towards all directions. And we rerun our application. Then you will see that you have distance towards all the di directions for your text box. Okay, so you can enter text to your text box and this will then allow you to, for example, later trigger events based on the text or generally work with text boxes in your application to store the data or to log the user in if your software uses users and so forth. Let's look at a couple more properties that such a text box has. Okay, so we already created the font size, the margin, and we can add a couple more here. Okay, so I'm going to add, for example, accepts return. This is something that we can set to true, which will allow us to press the return button. And then we need to use text wrapping in order to make sure that the text will be wrapped. We're going to look at text wrapping in a second to see what the different properties are. So for example, I can now go ahead and say hello return world return and then exclamation mark okay so this is something that is allowed by using these accepts returns and now if we use text wrapping let's say we had hello world i'm super happy today for example you can see that the text is automatically wrapping to the next line now if we use no wrap, for example, and we would use the same text or we'll just use a longer text. So let's rerun this. And here we say, this is the best day of my life. You can see now it doesn't automatically wrap it to the next line. We can use return to get to the next line, but you can see that it doesn't automatically wrap our text. So that's what this no wrap will do. And now, there is another option that we have here and that is the wrap with overflow. Okay, now let's run this again and play around with it. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by 
one of my courses. So you're learning something about WPF in this video and I have a complete C-Sharp masterclass which teaches you a lot more about C-Sharp if you feel like you need to learn more about C-Sharp to understand everything that's going on. And then if you want to learn everything you need to know about WPF, definitely check out my WPF course. It's a 15 hour course which will teach you everything you need to know about WPF, building an entire Windows Store clone using my apps in order to achieve this Metro design, which is the design language, so to speak, for the latest Windows 10 applications. You can find a link in the description down below and there you get a huge discount, so don't miss out. Get one of the courses or both of them now. And now let's get back to the video. And here I'm going to write something like, hello world, world, world. Okay, you can see now it's basically the same thing as we had with rep. But now the difference is if I have a super long word, like hello world, 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 you can see now it's, it will not jump to the next line. Okay, so let me take that and play around with rep once again. So you can see how rep handles it. So you can see the difference in those three settings directly. So here you see, if I enter that same text, it wraps it towards the next line. So it just cuts it at one point where the next letter wouldn't fit into the text box anymore. And then it just sends it over to the next row. Okay. Or the next line, so to speak. All right. And that's, basically the text box with its simple features, so to speak. Now there are a couple more properties here, of course, and also a bunch of events. I think a very interesting one will probably be spell check. Okay, so here we can use spell check and you can enable it. So is enabled, you can set that to true. This will allow you to spell check your application, but then you also need to define a language. So here, if I'm using ENUS, this will allow me to now use the American English, so to speak, in order to spell check. Okay, let's run this. And let's actually check it out. So here, we have something like world, word would work, world will work, wordle, you can see now Wordle, it doesn't recognize this word. Okay, it complains here, so I should check it. Right clicking on it, you can see I get options here like Word, Words, Wordy, Worlds, Wordy, and so forth. And now if I use something like color, that will be fine. But if I use color, you can see now it's going to complain. So let me check color again. And this is because we use American English and not British English, because otherwise color with a U would be fine. And now right clicking on it, you can see it gives me the option of cooler or color. So this is how you can activate a spell check. And in general, you can see that there are a bunch more properties that you can define. Accepts tabs, if you want to activate tabs so the user can press tabs. Then you can define a background if you want to change the color, for example. So here, let's say I want to have an Alice blue color. This will create a very light blue color, or let's say I use aqua. This will create this background color. If you want to change the text color, you would change the foreground. Okay, so let's say we want to use brown to make it super ugly. So now we have this bluish background and then this brown text. And you can even define a text property by default. So the default text would be hello world, let's say. And then we can see that the text will be even in our designer visible straight away. It will directly say something like hello world and in this brown color that we have defined here. If you want to make sure that no one can change the text that is set in a text box, you can use something called is read only. Okay, so here is read only, set it to true. And now if we run this application, we will see that we cannot change the text that we have here. So I can click in it, but I cannot change it because it's read only. All right, and that's it for now for text boxes. Thanks for watching another part of our WPF series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like 
And if you loved it, then leave a sub. And also check out the next video in the series. You can always refer back to the playlist to find the next video that will help you out with WPF. And also if you want to become a real pro in WPF, then check out the link in the description to get the full course.